All right, so hopefully this is working. Uh, working on page 83 in the notebook. It's kind of weird with no kids in here this time. All right, so proving quadrilaterals with uh, coordinate checklists. Uh, we have this page right here underneath, and I added some graph paper for the graph so we could actually go through and uh, solve for some of these things. All right, so let's take a look. So quadrilateral, so the word for quadrilateral means four. So quad is four. So it's, does it have four sides? Okay, so now we're gonna start at the very beginning. So does it have four sides? No, it's not a quadrilateral. All right, you're done. All right, if it, yes, yes, if it has four sides, then it is a quadrilateral. This is kind of like that chart that we had on a previous page where it actually went down and actually talked about each things. So next thing, does it have two pairs of parallel sides? If there is two pairs, I would go down here. If there's not two pairs, then I have to go check one of these other ones right here. So no, so parallel means that they need to have the same slope. So opposite sides need to have the same slope. So no, one pair would be here. No pairs, okay, no pairs, parallel sides. Two pairs of adjacent sides are congruent. So that means that uh, kind of like this is the, the pathway that we did for the kites. Here is the trapezoids. And then these are going down for squares and rhombuses. Okay, so now quadrilaterals, kite, and then right here, regular quadrilateral means no pairs of sides are parallel, no sides congruent, and none of that good stuff. So one pair of 90 degree angles, then it would be a right kite for this one right here. So just basically following the path. So I'm gonna go through and uh, do one of the problems so we could actually follow this out. So the first problem that we have is this one right here. So it gives you some coordinates, so we need to go through and actually figure out where they're gonna be located at. So if I'm looking here, so it's two, four, so one, two, one, two, three, four. That one's A, uh, four, negative one, one, two, three, four, negative one. Uh, negative one, negative three, negative one, one, two, three. What's my C? And my last one is going to be negative three, two. One, two, three, one, two. And this is my, this is D. So I'm going to go through and connect my ends. There's a couple things I need to actually figure out. So from here, Okay, so now we have something like this here. Now, we're going to go through and actually start figuring out a couple of these things. So the first thing on my checklist was, is it, um, does it have two pairs of parallel sides? Now, I'm going to do the basic thing that I showed you guys. If you have a graph, it's always rise over run. So I'm going to sketch these out so you guys can see this. Right here, so let's do DA first. So we're doing slopes. All right, sorry. All right, so for DA, uh, slope is always gonna be rise over run. Rise over run, so the rise is up two, and the run, one, two, three, four, five, two over five. Now let's look to see at the opposite side. The opposite of DA would be CB. Okay, the rise is two. Run, one, two, three, four, five. 
So I have one pair. Now let's look at the next side. So the next pair is going to be the other side over here. So this way and this way right there. So let's do DC. DC, the rise, let's see. If you notice, it's going down here. It's going down, so the rise is negative. So it's down one, two, three, four, five. Down five and over one, two. Next one's AB. So AB, because that one's opposite that one. So same thing, it's going down one, two, three, four, five, over two down five over two. All right, so now, according to my checklist, these two are parallel and these two are parallel. So if I'm looking at it here, so does it have two pairs? Yes, so now it's gonna go down this way, okay? If it doesn't have, it only had one pair, then I'll go down this route. If it had none that would be parallel, I would go down this route, okay? And we're asking each question every time. So yes, it is a parallelogram just by that. So I know right here for the first one, I would say yes and my slopes are, so let's see, I have DA is 2 over 5, CB is 2 over 5, I D C is negative 5 over 2, and A, B is negative 5 over 2 also. So filling those in as I go. So yes, because to figure out parallelogram, I need to know slopes. Now, is it a rectangle? So let's see. Diagonals are congruent in 90 degree angles. Hmm. So let's, let's start with the diagonals part. So for that one, let's look at diagonals. So diagonal, so whenever I'm dealing with this, I check the diagonals, I have to draw it in, and it's corner to corner. There we go, corner to corner. So I have my diagonals there. So my diagonals, So let's check our diagonal. So now this one, we're not doing the slopes, we're doing the distance. So let's do right here, CA. So it'd be my distance is equal to, okay, so if you totally forgot this, my distance, ah, lowercase, that's square root of delta x squared plus delta y squared. So it's always where you're gonna be using this one right here. So now for CA, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my points back in here. So I don't lose those. A was two and four. B is four and negative one. C was located at negative one, negative three, and D was located at negative three and two. So let's see, for delta X, so now we're doing CA or AC from here to here. So my delta X is how far from negative one to two, that would be three squared, plus my delta Y is from negative three to four, that's seven squared, so it's going to be square root of 9 plus 49, that's square root of 58. So I can approximate that, but it's not going to matter because I just need to see if my other diagonal is going to be exactly the same. So that's CA. Now let's do the next one, which would be uh, DB.
So now for dB, so how far is it from negative 3 to 4? 7 squared plus from 2 to negative 1, that's 3 squared. So square root of 49 plus 9, square root of 58. So that and that are the same. So the diagonals are the same. So if the diagonals are the same, that means that it is going to be a rectangle. So yes, rectangle. And I'll put in the distance. What do we have? We have CA. and then the next one was DB. Square root of 58 also. So they're both square root of 58. So now I got that part right there. So that's, it is gonna be a rectangle just for that piece. Now, are, they are congruent, but are they 90 degrees? Okay, are they gonna be 90 degrees? So let's see. Now, if we're looking at this, So if they're not congruent, it has to go down here. If they're not congruent, it would go this way. So this is not congruent. Ah, the pi symbol. That's not congruent, and yes, congruent. So not congruent, it has to go down here. Don't worry about the 90 degree part, because this actually is one of my checklists are down here. So just because the diagonals are congruent, it is gonna be a rectangle we're gonna to have to check this. If they're not congruent, then perpendicular diagonals, okay, then I would actually check to see if the diagonals are perpendicular by figuring out that slope. But my next thing is asking for a rhombus. That's the next part of this. So that's what this is right here, okay? So diagonals are congruent, so it is a rectangle. So I'm gonna go back in my notebook a little bit because if it is a rectangle, we automatically know one thing. Uh, let's see if I can find it now. There it is. Okay. So if I'm looking at my notes right here, so a rectangle is never a rhombus. Okay, so I already proved that it is a rectangle. So if it is a rectangle, that means it cannot be a rhombus. So these two together do not work. So it's either one or the other. It cannot be both. So I proved it, it's gonna be a rectangle, so therefore I need to go through the path of rectangles. So automatically, so if this is a rectangle, it is not a rhombus. Okay, because it is a rectangle already. So now let's check to see if it is gonna be a square. All right, so a couple things actually happen if they're square. All sides are congruent and perpendicular diagonals. So we could actually figure this out a couple different ways. So we could find out the distance of all four or we could just find the distance of these two and then find the slopes of these two. So now I'm gonna to look to see if these slopes are perpendicular. So let's, let's take a look at this next part. And let's do diagonals slope. So let's do diagonal slope. So now again, I have my graph here to help me out. So since I have the graph to help me out, this, this is gonna help me. So let's find out the slope of CA. So rise, so going from C to A, it's going up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's going up seven and over one, two, three. Seven over three. And the next thing is gonna be for DB. 
So now it's going down. It's going down. We're reading it from left to right. It's going down. So it's going down one, two, three. So it's down three and over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now for these ones right here, for them to be perpendicular, symbol for perpendicular, Okay, a couple things have to happen. Opposite reciprocal. So opposite and reciprocal have to happen. So now, let's see. These, this is positive, this is negative. So they're opposite already. This is seven over three, this is three over seven. They are reciprocals of each other. So if I take this fraction and flip it over, that will become three over seven. So they are opposite and reciprocal. So that means that this is going to be a right angle right here. So if that's gonna be a right angle in there, that means that these slopes are gonna be perpendicular. That means since they are congruent and they are perpendicular, that means that this has to be a square. So this is yes, the square and diagonals. Uh, let's see. Uh, what was it? Seven over three. So when we're all said and done with this, we have yes, yes, no, and a yes. So the checklist helps us out and even tells us what I need to add here for this, you know, what, what I need to check for each part just to see if it is going to fit that category. All right, so don't forget, like and subscribe, right?